Hey, this exercise doesn't have a fancy name, but it's very effective at strengthening the quad. So I just call it slow knee flexion and extension. So you're gonna lay on your back. You're gonna have your leg up in this position. You can either hold it with your hands, that's gonna be a little bit easier, or you can let it hang out on its own, that's gonna be a little bit harder. From there, you're gonna slowly allow your knee to bend as far as it comfortably can, and then you're gonna slowly straighten it as far as it comfortably can. If there's a little bit of discomfort in mid-range, I want you to move slowly through those points because often that pain will start to fade as we get control there. So with this exercise, we're doing a couple of things. Number one is we're working the quad muscle here to straighten the leg and to hold the leg in this position. There's no load on the knee, so it can be an effective position if other ways of loading the quad are painful. As the knee is lowering, this is called an eccentric motion. The quad is still working, but the leg is lowering. Often we find that eccentric control of the knee is the most challenging part of the rehab process. Things like going downstairs, going downhill are most problematic, and those are, require eccentric or control while lowering. And so if anything, I want you to go slower when lowering. You can see I'm already shaking a little bit here. So this is a little bit of work, or should be you know, quite a bit of work, even without any resistance. The third thing that this is potentially doing is that we're going through ranges of knee motion that may have been painful for you, but we're hopefully doing it in a way that creates work and a lot less pain. This can tell the brain, hey, I'm okay, I'm safe here, and the brain doesn't have to protect things as much. Pain is often a protective response. And so if you're having knee pain, but it's doing something that's not creating an injury, that could potentially be the brain in an overprotective response. And so this is a nice way to retrain the quad, patella, quad tendons, in a way that is safe for the brain and can be less painful. All right, so that was maybe 10 reps, and I'm feeling quite a bit of work through here. However, if you're ready to take it up a notch, we can add a band. So I like a light power band here. I find it just gives us some variable resistance. The hardest part is just hooking it onto your foot. So here's how we do it. I played around with this for like 10 minutes to try to figure out the best way to explain this. But we're gonna take the power band, and you're gonna put your whole leg through it, okay? So that is around my leg. I'm then gonna take the top, and I'm gonna make a loop. So that's crossed like that, and I'll put the loop on my foot. So now that's crossed on my foot with the band underneath. From there, I'm gonna take both sides of the band underneath, and I'm gonna step on them with my other foot, okay? As I do that, you can see the band is nicely crossed on my leg, and I can do the same drill, but man, there's a whole lot more work there. I can release some tension on the band to be less work, but more work still at the top. You see, I'm starting to shake, and then I come down with control. So adding a band just takes it to another level of difficulty here. So again, I'll show that putting on the foot, because it does make a difference to have it hooked securely to your foot, because you can straighten your leg all the way. So you get the band fully around your leg, you make a loop, put that loop around your foot, snug it down so now it's crossed, bring these through, and then you can step on it with your other foot, okay? And that pulls in roughly a straight line. It's a little bit of an angle, but probably not a big deal, okay? That's the slow knee flexion and extension. If you're having some knee pain, particularly in the front of the knee, potentially with going downstairs or downhill, can be a great place to start.